throughout both your life and your career. It will absolutely be things that change your journey forever. We could be talking about a relationship that you started or ended, or maybe a decision to move somewhere in the world, or maybe you decided to acquire a certain set of professional skills. All these things can either positively or negatively impact your life. In this video, we're gonna talk about how a cybersecurity certification, specifically the CISSP or the CISP from ISC Squared, changed my career forever. First off, if you haven't seen any of my videos on certifications and my career journey, I highly recommend that you go back and watch them so you can have the full context of how my career played out so far. Although your journey might not be the same, and it's unlikely that it is the same, you can still gain insight into how things have been in the past and how things have changed over the years, and then apply that knowledge to your career. If you don't know, I've spent a good amount of my career working in the defense industry with several of the major contractor companies like Raytheon, General Dynamics, and Northrop Grumman. One thing that I learned very early on in my cybersecurity journey is that in the defense industry, the DOD 8570 mandate is literally a roadmap of certifications that you should focus on because all the jobs in the career field have some type of certification requirement that has to meet a certain level in the mandate certification chart. Some other companies will use the DOD 8570 as a guide, but it's not mandatory outside of the defense industry. My first step in the DOD 8570 was getting the Security Plus, which was definitely a challenge on its own because basically all the information was brand new to me and that makes it significantly more difficult to learn. Now, one thing that I realized a little bit after getting my Security Plus is that there are a lot of opportunities in all kinds of different companies and you never really know which kind of opportunities will become available to you so you have to consider different factors. For me, it was very clear that in the defense industry, there's two main certifications that satisfy a lot of the requirements, and those are the Security Plus and the CISSP or the CIS. With that being said, that puts a lot of stress on achieving both those certifications if you wanna land some of the more desirable jobs. I also asked myself and looked on job boards to see if the demand is consistent in other industries for cybersecurity professionals. And guess what? The demand is the same. You can go on a job search website like Indeed, and at any given time, you'll see over 10,000 job postings that list the CISSP as a requirement or as highly desired. That fact alone made the decision to pursue the CISSP really easy. So this is Indeed.com. This is a popular job searching website, and I'm gonna search CISSP. So you can see right now, as of this recording, 12,915 job postings came back from the search result of CISSP. So this is just another job searching website that you can use, this is ZipRecruiter. I'm gonna search for CISSP, and we can see on here 11,228 jobs. So you can see, overall, between two different websites searching for jobs, there are a ton of postings out there. And of course, you can use LinkedIn or any other one that you wanna use. We're not gonna focus on strategies to pass the exam or resources to prepare for the exam in this video, but I have several videos on the channel about that including how I pass in two weeks. So check those out after this video. Anyways, it's kind of funny because after I got the Security Plus, I had thought about taking the CISSP next, even though I was nowhere near the experience requirement. If you aren't familiar with the CISSP experience requirement, you basically need a minimum of five years of paid work experience, or you can have four years with one year of waiver. I found out that that wasn't really a good idea because I still wanted to learn about technical topics. And frankly, the CISSP material is really boring if you're in that mindset. So I didn't continue towards the CISP at that time. Fast forward a few years to 2015, when I was in a situation where it was just time to take a chance and go for the CISSP. As I said, I have several videos documenting my journey and strategies that I recommend, but eventually I ended up passing the exam. I was still short on experience, but at least I had passed the exam. Did it make a difference that I had passed the CISSP in my career at that point? Not really, because without the experience requirement, you don't really get much additional credit from employers and you aren't actually really certified. In the defense industry, the DOD 8570 does count the CISSP associate or the associate of ISC squared, the same as a fully endorsed and certified CIS holder, but I have news for you. None of the employers are gonna hire you in at the same level as if you're fully endorsed, especially if you have little to no experience. It would just be dumb on their part. I didn't really see any big benefit until I was fully endorsed with full experience and then other opportunities with significantly higher pay started to actually become available to me. It's in this journey to the CISSP that I learned a few different things. First, going after the most advanced or highest level certification isn't always the best plan. Frequently, people are so quick to jump to the highest credential that they can, they ignore the things that will improve their situation or skill set right away. If we use baseball terms, people wanna start on third base thinking they hit a triple, but in fact, they never went to bat. Or if you're building a house, they wanna immediately put the roof on before they have the foundation and the wall set up. A successful career is built on a lot of smaller steps that link together, not giant leaps. The second thing is that it's okay to take chances. 
Sometimes we have a break or a rest period in our careers where not much is going on, and it's okay to try different trainings or certifications that might be a stretch for where you're at, but don't jump to that as the first option. I was okay with failing the CISP if that happened, but I wasn't overstressing about the journey to get there. The third thing is that you always have to have a plan. You should always try to have a plan in this career field, regardless of what you're doing. If you're going for a certification, how's that gonna help you in your career? If you wanna work a specific type of job, what do you need to get there? Plans change and you have to be flexible, but having no plan is the worst possible situation that you can be in. That'll lead to poor decisions that either negatively impact you or provide no value for your ultimate goals. Ultimately, the reason why the CISSP changed my career forever was not only because of the lessons that I learned, but also because once I was certified, the jobs that everybody wants started becoming available, which makes all the time and energy completely worth it for my career. Question of the day, what are career goals that you're trying to accomplish this year? Let me know down in the comment section below. I know a lot of people that are watching this video are considering the CISSP as a certification that they want to pursue, and I encourage anybody in this career field to follow their desires. At the end of the day, you have to make the decision on what's best for your career, but I hope the information that I provided is valuable insight to help your journey. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description for more resources related to this video, and I'll see you next time.